Hello my sweet friends and welcome to Kinda Shabby. My name is Becky and I am so glad you stopped by. Today we're using drop cloth fabric and some iron-on transfer sheets to create some adorable custom pet pillows. I'm also going to be giving you a small tutorial on how I edit those photos for projects like these using Canva. Well, there is lots of fun in store today, so let's get these projects started. To begin our project, we're going to need a photo that will be printed onto our transfer sheets, which will then be ironed onto our drop cloth fabric. I enjoy using the Canva app on my iPad, but you can also use it on your phone or your laptop as well. So I'm just going to select Canva, and then when it comes up, you've got all kinds of different options here. You can create your own custom design size here. But since I know that what I'm going to be using is eight and a half by 11, I'm gonna select this template here that says Flyer. And when that opens up, you've got your blank page over here, but then you've got all kinds of different templates that you can select if you like any of those designs. And by selecting this little arrow here, that takes all of those templates away, so then you're just left with a nice big page here for you to work with. And then on your toolbar here, you've got lots of things that you can use to begin to design. I'm going to select Camera Roll, and it brings up different pictures, and I'm going to select this photo here, and then Add to Page, at the bottom. And again, when I select that little arrow, it makes all that go away, and I'm left with that just cute little picture of little Miss Daisy May. So now what I want to do is come up here in the corner where it says Edit Photo. And the things that I'm going to be using now are part of the, you can see where it says Pro. I have the professional version of Canva, which is $12.99 a month. I'm gonna be using this one here that is the background remover, but you can find background remover apps online and you don't have to pay $12.99 for it, but I use this all the time, so it's worth it and my business pays for it. So then when I select background remover, I'm left with only that little outline of my dog. Just tap anywhere on the outside there. You can see it looks a little dark. So I'm gonna go back to Edit Photo. And they have all of these filters here. Let me try Arrow. And that actually makes her features stand out a little better. So I like that one. But you can use any of those filters that you feel like is going to enhance the colors in your photo. Now what I'm gonna do is grab this little circle down here and I'm gonna drag this and keep dragging it until I get her photo fully covering my area here. And I think that looks good. And to take away those little outlines there, you just simply select anywhere in that gray field around your design. And I like the photo just as it is, but you can add any kind of little cute thing that you want. If you come over here to Elements, let me select Elements, and you can type in anything that you want. Let me type in Pink Banner. And hit return and then it brings up all of those selections let me see this one's cute so I'll select that tap that arrow to get rid of all of those templates when you pull that in I can make that whatever size that I want then I can come over here to the text box and I can type in Daisy And 
I can move that. So there's all kinds of cute things you can do to make modifications in your photo. Isn't that just adorable? And I can come up here and I can change the color. So let's say that I want the word Daisy to be in white. It changes that. And if I want to change the font, click that drop down. All kinds of cute little fonts come up. You can just scroll until you find a font that you like. So you can change the font, you can change the color, change the size right here. Make it smaller to fit in there. I've decided I don't want the font, so I click on the word and there's a little garbage can right there. Click on the garbage can and it gets rid of that. So then I can select the banner, click on the garbage can and get rid of that. So then all I've got left is my cute little picture of Daisy. I want to actually reverse this image because when I iron it, I'm going to be placing it face down. So I select my photo, come up here to the word flip, and it asks me if I want to do it horizontally or vertically, and I want to do it horizontally. And then it just reverses that. Come over here to this arrow, save image, and now I can select print, and it finds my printer, which is just your standard Epson inkjet printer. And I'm gonna go put this in my printer, and we'll be right back. So I have printed off my transfer sheets because I'm actually going to be making two pillows. And first of all, I grabbed this one a little too quickly when it was still wet, and I scratched the color off with my fingernail, but I'm still gonna go ahead and use this image. And then I'm gonna walk you through just one more time on how I did this image, and also how we reverse this, because you cannot reverse text in Canva. So we've got one more step to do after we create our design. So again, I selected the eight and a half by 11 flyer design, and I'm just gonna go ahead and select add page down here, just so I can show you how to do it. And again, I'm coming over here to my camera roll, find the photo that I want to use, select it and add to page, hit this arrow here to get rid of the photos. Click on Edit Photo, come to Background Remover, and it removes the background. Then I'm going to touch in the gray field over here, just to get rid of that. Grab this circle here with my finger, and we're just going to enlarge my little photo here of Sweet Little Pebbles. Then we're going to come to Elements. This shows me what I have recently used, but I'm going to type it in again. I'm going to type in pink banner. I'm going to select that one. And I'm just going to drag it down. I can just make this as big as I would like for it to be. And then I'm going to come to elements again and type in floral border. And then this is the one that I use, so I'm going to select that. And I always am tapping that arrow to get rid of that side there. And we're just going to tap it and drag it down. I'm going to grab this one here and just make it smaller. I'm going to tap into the gray over here. So now we've got our banner with our little floral border. And then I'm going to come over here to text and add a heading. I'm going to type in pebbles and I'm actually going to use um, all caps. And then I'm going to hit right here to hide my keyboard there. And again, we're going to tap this 
arrow to get rid of all of that on the side. So now I can just click and drag that down. Come up here and change the color. Let me just use that bright pink right there. How cute. And then I can come to this drop down box right here and select a different font. And I've selected Montserrat. So that's just quickly how I did that. I'm going to come up here to this little trash can and I'm just going to delete that because I don't need page two. We're just using page one. So I have already saved this to my camera roll right here. And you click Save Image and that will save it to your camera roll. So now, let me click out of this and I'm going to come to my camera roll and I'm going to grab that photo and now I'm going to come up here to edit and you can see that it's already reversed here but if I go to crop and I come up here that's going to flip it so I'm going to flip it back so that is how I reverse the image after I have saved it because you cannot reverse text using Canva. And so now that I've got my photo, I can just select my arrow, select print, and then once it has found my printer, I can actually go over here where it says media quality and I can select there, select best, because I want it to be a nice, crisp image. Now you'll have to check the direction of print in your printer, but for my printer, I put it face down and it pulls it and prints it that way. And I hope you enjoyed the little Canva tutorial. And if you have any other questions about that, I will be more than happy to help you any way that I can. And I've let my images dry for about 30 minutes. And now the next thing that we're going to do is take some scissors and you're going to trim off all of this excess. Because if this isn't trimmed off, all of this white will show up on our fabric and we don't want that. But you still want to leave just a small little white border around your image. Just like that. And so I'm going to take just a few minutes to trim around both of our images and then we'll go ahead and get them ironed onto our fabric. So I have Miss Daisy all cut out and I'm going to be making two different style pillows. So for this style, I'll be placing this image face down, making sure that I have enough to have a seam allowance all around the image there. And following my package instructions here, I will be ironing this for three minutes on high with no steam. And as you press, you want to make sure that you apply lots of pressure. And if you have a heat press, there's also instructions for using your heat press to do this as well. So I'll see you guys in three minutes once I'm finished ironing my image down. And now that I have that ironed down, I'm going to remove it from this area here and allow that to cool for two to three minutes before we remove the backing paper. And now I'm going to slowly remove the backing paper. And if any part of that image looks like it is not adhered well, we just lay it down and then start pressing it all over again. And that looks really, really good so far. Oh my goodness, that's adorable. So I'm gonna lay this off to the side and we're gonna go ahead and get our other image applied as well. So I want my little pebbles pillow to be a circle. So I took a nice large platter here and traced and cut out my fabric. That way I can make sure that when I place the image down, I'm gonna have enough room for a nice seam allowance. 
and I'll be following those same instructions when I apply this image to my little circle of fabric here as well. And I didn't have enough of the drop cloth fabric to do a circle, so this is just a nice white canvas fabric that is about the same weight as the drop cloth. And we're just going to get this one pressed down following those same directions. So for this little pillow, I have my lace all pinned around there, and I'm going to stitch that on. And then I'm going to put the backing on there and stitch around that, leaving an area open so I can turn it right side out and then get that stuffed. And for this one, I took a pin and traced very closely around it and then kind of pinned the fabric together so I could cut it out. Now I'm going to remove these pins and then I'm going to repin this over the top and stitch around leaving this bottom open again so it can be turned right side out and then stuffed with polyfill. You want to make sure that you don't pin through this because that would leave holes. So I am pinning very close to the edge again just to make sure that I'm not going to be pinning through my little image here. So here are my finished pillows. Oh my goodness, I just love them. And this one I did a hand stitching overcast stitch after I stuffed that. How cute! And then this one, because it was a little thicker with all the lace and everything in there, I did just a tiny, tiny little stitch on the sewing machine to stitch that closed. And I just love how they turned out. And now all I need to do is give you a closer look at how cute all of this week's projects turned out. So much for joining me today it has been my pleasure to craft with you please subscribe for more kind of shabby but always chic crafty inspirations and until next time my sweet friends be blessed mm -hmm.